What's up you guys? I find it intriguing that not only are we able to predict using robust statistical models nowadays, but also tell how confident our classifier predicts. Here's a model that can do that and it's the logistic regression. Say we desire to classify whether an email is spam or not. Now, if you were to use linear regression, it will give you a continuous output in the real domain where its meaning is not evident. Instead, we can estimate a probability if a certain instance is spam or not. And that's where logistic regression comes into play. This entails searching for a decision boundary, hereby denoted by theta, that sets up the frontier between spam and not spam. If your number of features is small, you can run a brute force search on theta. And if not, it's more efficient to go for numerical methods such as gradient descent. Then classification could be performed in real time to predict spam versus not spam. Now, how does logistic regression work? Just like a simple regression model, logistic regression computes a weighted sum of the input features plus a bias term, of course, but instead of outputting the result directly like the linear regression model does, it outputs the logistic of this result. P hat, that is the estimated probability, is a transformation of the inner product between theta and the given vector x. This is referred to as the sigmoid function or the S-shaped function, or even in neural networks as the activation function. It outputs a number between 0 and 1, thus a probability. So the higher the input is, the probability goes to 1, and the lower it is, it goes to 0. Midway, when the input is 0, that means you have a probability of 0.5. Now, once the logistic regression model has estimated the probability that an instance x, for example, belongs to the positive class, it can then make its prediction y hat easily. So if p hat is greater than 0.5, my y hat could be classified as 1, else it's classified as 0. Perfect. Now you know how a logistic model estimates probabilities and makes predictions and so on. But the question is, how is it trained, right? So the objective of training is to set the parameter vector theta so that the model estimates high probabilities for positive instances and low probabilities for negative instances. This idea is captured by the cost function shown in front of you. So for a single training instance x, the cost function that, you know, reports the loss is also known as the log loss or, or the logistic loss. And, you know, the cost function makes sense because minus log t grows very large when t approaches zero. So the cost will be large if the model estimates a probability close to zero for a positive instance. And on the other hand, it will also be large if the model estimates a probability close to one for negative instances, which is precisely what we want. Now the cost function over the whole training set is simply the average cost over all training instances. It can be written in a single expression, as you can verify easily. So we just sum the log losses. That is, when y is 1, we get a log p. And when y is 0, we get a log 1 minus p. Now the bad news here is that there is no known closed form equation to compute the value of theta. As you can see, p hat, which is a function of theta, gives us a nonlinear function of theta. So, you know, unlike linear regression, we don't have a normal equation that gives us a closed form solution of theta, right? But the good news is that this cost function is actually convex. So algorithms such as gradient descent is guaranteed to find the global minimum given that the learning rate is not too large and you wait long enough, right? So the partial derivatives of the cost function, j of theta, with respect to the j model parameter theta j, could be easily shown to be the following. 
right? So now that we have this derivative or partial derivative, for each instance or training vector xi, we could compute the prediction error. This is the error term, which then is multiplied by the feature xj. And then we compute the average of all such terms. Now, once you have the gradient vector containing all the partial derivatives, once you stack them all into one vector, you can then use it in algorithms such as batch gradient descent. And that's it. You now know how to train a logistic regression model using, for example, stochastic gradient descent. So for SGD, you would, of course, just take one instance at a time, right? because stochastic gradient descent selects randomly the rows of x, right? And for mini batch, you would choose randomly mini batches at a time from x, right? And that's it.